I did a video recently about the relationship of carbs, sugars, with uh, fatty liver. <clears throat> Got some uh, good reaction to it. Here's one of them, a fellow named Grant Douglas. Grant says, okay, so the question is which carb, fructose or sucrose or glucose, does the most damage? I bet fructose, since in ancient times the Romans and Greeks used to cr uh, cram geese with figs to create fatty liver. Well, he didn't mention that uh, the French and a lot of other folks currently uh, stuff geese with corn, high fructose corn, uh, to do the same thing, to create that fatty liver. Now, John, as he usually does, came up with some very interesting research. Um, <clears throat> he said, it would appear fructose is the worst actor. This study shows fructose raises LDL and CRP, C-reactive protein, higher than the other two. But none of the sugars are good. Certain whole fruits can spike blood glucose to a very high level in an hour, less than an hour as well. Um, <clears throat> so I looked up John's, um, the study he cited, and here's what I saw, at least coming out of the blocks, some interesting results. Uh, glucose and sucrose supplementation initially resulted in significant increase in blood glucose and insulin levels as well, compared to fructose. In other words, fructose didn't really increase the, uh, the glucose, blood glucose or insulin. Now, does that mean that maybe fructose is um, not that bad after all? Uh, when I asked that question, I'm remembered of a, or I'm remembered, I'm reminded of a very uh, well-known quote you got to ask yourself the question, do I feel lucky? Um, I live in uh, Lexington again. We, uh, for about a decade, I worked with Toyota in terms of um, health care, health care benefits, helping uh, develop uh, prevention for uh, the uh, Toyota employees and family members. And it's a common thing here in, uh, to in uh, Toyota land in um, Kentucky as well as a couple of surrounding states, Tennessee as well. Big states for having Mountain Dew in, um, for breakfast and lunch and snacks in between. Now, this one's a diet Mountain Dew, so maybe it's uh, far healthier. <clears throat> uh, actually, it may be, but again, uh, the vast minority of Mountain Dews that I've seen uh, people drinking are uh, our diet. So let's get a little bit deeper into the article and um, find out really what this, uh, what this is saying about fructose. It was in a, um, the journal, uh, Lipids in Health and Disease. It was uh, published in 2014, and it's acute effects of feeding fructose, glucose, and sucrose on blood lipid levels. Now, <clears throat> what they're doing is comparing fructose... Um, to glucose and sucrose. It's post, uh, they're looking at postprandial uh, impact, lipemia, impacts of cholesterol and blood, lipo meaning chole uh, cholesterol and the other blood fats, and low-grade inflammation, uh, HSCRP. Here's how they did it. <clears throat> it's a very small study, uh, only 14 people. They had an overnight fast, and then they gave these people, they did a, um, they blinded it and said, okay, you're gonna get one of three different drinks. Isocaloric, meaning same number of calories. Uh, the drinks contain 50 grams of either fructose or glucose or sucrose. Then they took blood samples at baseline, then at 30, 60, and 120 minutes, and analyzed those blood samples for glucose, insulin, and uh, C-reactive protein, uh, as well as blood lipids, again, cholesterol values. Now, <clears throat> why did they do this? According to them, fructose is uh, commonly known as fruit sugar. It's a component of sweeteners such as sugar, honey, and high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup has quadrupled since the beginning of the 20th century um, when it was introduced into a lot of foods uh, in terms of food processing. There's been a concomitant rise in cardiovascular disease, blood lipids, uh, cholesterol, insulin resistance, satiety hormones, um, hormones regarding 
whether I'm hungry or, or not. That's insulin, uh, leptin, and ghrelin. Inflammatory markers and obesity. Now, they make an assumption here, and I wasn't quite there, but let's go, let's go on and, and see if it makes sense. They said, since similar effects do not occur following the intake of starch or glucose, it has been proposed that fructose-induced met metabolic changes are not mediated by excessive sugar in intake in general, but by a specific response to fructose. Now, you'll see this. Uh, Robert Lustig is uh, a major proponent. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't read enough of him to where I could say for sure that he said, look, the other sugars don't bother you. But what he has said, and what many people have said, is that fructose is much, much worse. Well, again, at least in terms of blood glucose and insulin levels, you certainly couldn't tell that by this small study. So again, the aim of this study was to investigate the effects of fructose compared to glucose and sucrose. Well, here's the first, the first uh, set of numbers. As you can see, uh, their numbers are very interesting. The graph is very interesting, and the uh, low glucose, blood glucose compared in the, with the... So here are the people that took fructose. They have a very low blood glucose impact compared to sucrose and glucose, gl glucose ingestion. Same thing with insulin, and, and those two sort of go hand, to ha hand in hand, so they uh, certainly support each other. If you look at it on this right side, again, this is total area under the curve when you take all of these this time period, relatively minimal impact on um, blood glucose by ingesting fructose, but a significant impact on blood glucose uh, by ingesting glucose or sucrose. Same thing with insulin. Relatively small impact on insulin, at least within this first two-hour period. Uh, take the, those that took the fructose had a very relatively small impact on their insulin compared to uh, glucose and, and uh, sucrose. But here's where the uh, maybe you shouldn't feel lucky, uh, and maybe you should. Maybe it's not open season on um, Mountain Dew after all. Um, you start looking at things like C-reactive protein. Well, significant jump in C-reactive protein, even in the first two hours. I didn't know that C-reactive protein actually was going to be that quick of a, uh, an inflammatory response. But with fructose, evidently it is. Not so much with glucose and sucrose. And again, this is the area under the curve bar showing significant increase with uh, fructose ingestion, but not with glucose. Here's the other thing. Um, you look at LDL, the cholesterol values. LDL, uh, significant increase. Now, uh, for fructose, slight decrease with uh, glucose and sucrose. Sort of the opposite impact with triglycerides. Uh, not a significant increase with uh, fructose, but some significant increase in triglycerides with um, glucose and sucrose. Again, those are supported by the first two things that we saw because, it, uh, as you may remember, insulin stops the body from burning triglycerides. Um, so the, the same things, the glucose and sucrose, that caused increase in insulin also caused an increase in triglycerides. Here's an interesting thing that I don't, uh, I, there's a lot of questions raised by this. A lot of interesting information. Some of it is, uh, again, totally unexplained. You get a significant increase in HDL over that first two hour period with fructose, not with glucose and sucrose. So what does that mean? I don't think anybody can tell you right now. Um, to go back and recap it from a chart perspective, uh, cholesterol, significant increases in LDL and HDL from fructose, not from glucose and sucrose. On the other hand, glucose and sucrose cause increases in triglycerides that you don't see with fructose. Um, these, this is just um, further discussion that was in the article, and they basically cover some of the same things 
that I've already covered. And that is, I think one of the major takeaways from here is not that fructose is safe. In fact, as John said, and as uh, Robert Lustig and a lot of other people have said, there's a very good chance that uh, fructose is far, far more dangerous. Um, I'm not taking any of them. I'm not drinking uh, Mountain Dew. I'm not drinking fructose. I'm not drinking glucose or uh, sucrose. Just to remind you, I have insulin resistance, like over half of us 60 and above. And even those that uh, don't already have documented insulin resistance or diabetes, I still have to go back to that same question. Um, are you thinking that you can have carbs uh, in your diet routinely like this? Are you really feeling that lucky? Thanks for your interest.